Today we're going to be comparing the iPhone 14 Pro to the Fujifilm X-T4 and the Sony FX6 to see what difference a pro camera makes if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Our first test is your typical talking head shot. So we took all of the cameras to the local dog park and got to work. Hey guys, this is Monique and today we are shooting on the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. We are shooting on the iPhone 14 Pro in cinematic mode. This is the Fujifilm X-T4 with a 23mm lens. This is the Sony FX6 with a 35mm lens. Here's all four shots side by side. I love the idea of cinematic mode, but I think it's not quite as believable as the real cameras in this test. Next, we wanted to check out the telephoto lens. This is the three times zoom lens on the iPhone. Our third test was going to be slow motion. However, we were running out of light, so we decided to merge them into one telephoto slow motion test. Slow motion generally degrades image quality quite a bit on most phones, and generally speaking, the telephoto lenses aren't as high quality as the main camera lenses on most phones. So this means we're really taking a hit to image quality. On the iPhone, we were shooting at 240 frames a second. We had our Sony and Fujifilm cameras in manual focus, so any focusing issues you see are definitely our fault and not a fault of the autofocus system in the cameras. So if you're looking to do a lot of zooming in or you want to shoot a lot of slow motion, I'd really suggest checking out a proper camera rather than using your phone if you really care about image quality. Next up is the vlogging test, so we can see how each camera stabilizes walking motion. This was Charles's time to shine. Why do you want the iPhone 14 Pro? If you're vlogging like this, this is all you need. You have optical stabilization, sensor stabilization, it's gonna take out all the wobbles while you're walking along. We've got everything in sharp focus in the background, but with the new cinematic mode, it goes from this to this nice out of focus backgrounds something you're not going to get until you move up to a mirrorless camera but that's exponentially more expensive so let's do a bit of time traveling here we are on the iphone 11 pro every year they drop something they say it's better is it actually true i want to hope it is i hope it looks good on a big screen it looks great on the phone you don't have to spend all your money on a full frame camera you can go aps-c slightly smaller sensor slightly cheaper lenses right now we're shooting on the fujifilm xt4 it's got the 10 to 24 millimeter lens, it's zoom, which means you lose out in the fast aperture speeds, which means less out of focus backgrounds, but you get the benefits of doing stuff like this. Essential, right? But you wanna go full frame. Here we are on the FX3. This is gonna set you back thousands more than just the outlay for the phone, and you're gonna own a phone anyway. Is it worth it? Are we getting more depth of field in the background? Do you care about that? I mean, this is Netflix ready, but are you going to make a Netflix documentary or film? We also played with the ultra wide lens. This is a 0.5x lens on iPhone. This captures a lot more of the environment and also exaggerates sizes of anything close to the lens. We also threw in another cinematic mode test. Sorry about the dance moves, but this is the best model I could find on such short notice. Compared to cinematic mode, you can see how much more of the environment the ultra-wide lenses take in. The iPhone does surprisingly well here because we have enough light. Next, we have our low light test. So this is the iPhone 14 Pro shooting with its main camera in a very dimly lit studio environment. Now, I'd expect the iPhone to perform the worst here as it has a much smaller sensor that isn't as sensitive to these low light situations. This is the iPhone 14 Pro shooting in cinematic mode in the same dark environment. This is the iPhone 11 Pro. So this is a three year old iPhone. So I wouldn't expect the same performance from the latest and greatest. This is the Fujifilm X-T4. We're currently shooting with an f1.4 lens. So this should capture as much light as we can get from this really dim environment. This is the Sony FX3 shooting in its high base ISO. This means it's much more sensitive to light, which is perfect in this super dim studio environment. After testing all of the cameras, I'm not gonna pick a winner as I think they all performed amazingly given how much they cost. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I think you can definitely do it using just an iPhone. And if you're shooting using the ultra wide or the telephoto lens or in really dimly lit conditions, you could definitely justify the upgrade to a more modern iPhone if yours is more than a couple of years old. 
I do think there's a big difference stepping up from a phone to a mirrorless camera. So jumping from like an iPhone 14 to a Fujifilm X-T4 has a dramatic difference in image quality. I don't think you need it if you're just starting a YouTube channel, but it's definitely a very noticeable difference to quality, especially when the light goes down and also getting access to a lot of different lenses for different looks. Moving from the mirrorless camera to the Sony Cinema camera costs a lot of money and it does give you better image quality in my opinion, but it's a lot of money that could be better spent on lighting, audio, set design or anything else that would up your production value. If you are wanting to start your own YouTube channel, my best advice is to just start now. I have many friends that are just hoarding gear or just waiting until they can afford the best camera before they even start. And then I have other friends that just started years ago and now they have great channels and they just started with their phone. So just whatever camera you've got, just get out there and make content. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'd love it if you could leave a comment below and I'll catch you in the next video.